So here we are for the next talk. The presenter are uh, working at the Flanders Marine Institute of Belgium. Uh, they are Brit uh, Loneville, that she is a science officer, and uh, Salvador Fernandez as a data manager and JS expert. So please, I ask you to share the monitor or the presentation. Yeah, sure. Let's see how it works. Uh -huh. okay. I think. Okay, this is screen one, I think. Nope. One second. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Okay. I think it should be right. You should be seeing my screen right now. Presentation. Yeah. Try to put okay. it in presentation. Nice. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Okay. The stage Thank is you. for you. Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So, before of everything, we would like to start our presentation uh, telling you a story. What you can see in this map is a fleet of vessels fishing outside the, the waters of the Galapagos Islands in Ecuador. And I would like just to think a bit about it. Like, why do you think this is happening? As you can see, uh, these fishing vessels are just outside the island, but are not really close to them. Um, these fishing vessels are fishing for, for squid, which are known to be distributed uh, globally around all the world. So it's very strange, right, that this fishing vessel uh, is just outside the water, but not close to the island. What is happening, actually, is that these uh, fishing vessels are for a foreign fleet, so they are not from Ecuador. And they are fishing just outside the exclusive economic zone of uh, the Galapagos Islands, which means that they are fishing the same squid that is probably living around all the islands of uh, Galapagos. But they are in their complete right to do it because they are not under the jurisdiction of any country by being just outside the exclusive economic zone of them. So they are actually on the high seas, or as it's also known, the areas beyond national jurisdiction. What are these areas actually? So, as I define it in the United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS for short term, in the Article 86, what is happening is like uh, the high seas are all parts of the sea that are not included in the exclusive economic zone, or in other parts of other territorial waters of the country, such as the territorial sea, internal waters of a state, or in the archipelagic water of an archipelagic state. In the Article 87, uh, called the Freedom of the Seas, what it tells you, uh, this article is uh, all the different freedoms that uh, any country and any person in the world has on the high seas. And among these ones, one of them is the freedom of fishing. So actually, uh, this foreign fleet fishing just outside the, the waters of the Galapagos, they are in their complete right to do it under international law. Why are we telling you this? Because to our knowledge, nobody had created a, a map or a, or a GIS layer stating where exactly are the high seas. And this is where we come from. Uh, we are uh, we are Sabado Fernandez, um, Brit Nolville, um, among with other colleagues of our team. Uh, we maintain a sustained marine regions here in the Flanders Marine Institute of Belgium. Uh, marine regions, among other tasks that we have, we create uh, uh, GIS products stating different maritime boundaries on the world. So we offer territorial seas, we offer uh, high seas now, uh, we offer internal waters and different figures there. Uh, it's important to remark that we offer this for free. It's uh, available to anyone to, to download with no uh, no problem. Um, uh, among several links here, you can download the products in Marine Regions of Thor, and you can see the the code for creating this product on GitHub that we uploaded to under LifeWatch Marine Regions uh, High Seas. So how do we create this product? To, this pro to create this product of the High Seas, we use only free open source software. We started using uh, Post uh, Postgres database with the PostGIS extension. And in this database, we have already uploaded uh, one of our products, which is the exclusive economic zones of any country of the world, which you can find more information on many regions. Another layer that we have are, is just simply a layer of world countries of the world. The first thing we did is we merged them together. After having these countries and exclusive economic zones, if we make a difference with uh, a box of the world, then uh, in theory, we will get uh, the high seas because it's everything that is outside the uh, the jurisdiction of any country. We did this using the ST difference uh, function from PostGIS, and voila, we got the we got the high seas. This is the product, uh, and in an ideal world, this will be finished, and it will be perfect. It will be very simple. But we are not in the in an ideal world, and we want to be transparent about it. 
So we encountered some problems, especially we found that there were spikes in some parts of these polygons, and we also found some slivers. Now, uh, in other situation, maybe you could apply some, try, some time of a script to, to fix this automatically, but because this is a, 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 a data set that aims to be as uh, accurate as possible with the low figures, we decided to remove them manually, one by one, checking the data set uh, slowly and checking for all these spikes and slivers. To fix the spikes, our approach was to uh, use one of the functions of PostGIS, which is uh, stdump points, and then we convert these polygons into their vertices, their points. Thanks to this function, we can also get um, different different IDs that we will need. So an ID for the polygon, ID, an ID for, for the ring, because as you know, a polygon that has a hole inside, uh, these holes are called, those lines are called rings. So uh, for a polygon, we will have uh, the outer ring, which will be ID one, and the inner ring will be two, three, four, uh, as many um, rings as the, the polygon has. And of course, also a sort ID that allow us to draw back later the, the polygon. What we did is we read this uh, point uh, layer into QJS, and we delete those points, causing the spikes manually, one by one, and then we create the polygons back again, thanks to all these uh, pol IDs, uh, polygon IDs, ring IDs. Uh, to do this, we we did it one by one into a loop, uh, all the polygons, one, one polygon uh, per polygon. And we first created the, the lines, all the lines of this polygon, the outer rings and the inner rings of the polygon, using the um, estimate line function. And then, thanks to the other, the other function of PJS, estimate polygon, we could create the, po uh, the polygons back again, this time without the spikes and taking into account all the inner rings of each polygon. So exactly the same, just without the spikes. Now, to solve the issue with the sleep is a bit more complex. Um, to be honest, we only found uh, two cases of this problem. And to do this, we use one of our products, as I mentioned, the exclusive economic zones. We also have the boundaries, which is the same data set, but only with lines. We use the line around this area. And uh, we encountered a problem that the line was not perfectly cutting the sliver, was not perfectly cutting the polygon. So it would not overlap it, and it would not be able to cut it. What did we do to solve this? We, in this case, we took the last two points of this um, of this line, and we went to the R programming language. Using the lateral radius fair, we, <clears throat> we could use these two points to calculate the bearing, and then after having the bearing, uh, we could calculate uh, the next point just uh, half a meter away from the last point. And that was enough to finally overlap the, um, the polygon, because the distance was like minimal, less than centimeters. Now, getting this, uh, the next point of the line, we just took it and came back to PostGIS. And we simply use a point to create uh, an elongated line, a, long, a larger line. With a larger line, we could cut the, the sliver, and voila, we fixed the sliver problem. And now after that, we finally have the uh, HiSys product that, as I mentioned, you can download online in marine regions. And um, this is it, we'll be solved, but uh, there are more things that we did that uh, Bridget is going to tell you more about. Because at Marine Regions, we are huge supporters of the cause, uh, get New Zealand on the map, or hashtag get NZ on the map. Um, this uh, cause was started all because uh, uh, a big vendor of furniture, uh, we're not calling out any names, uh, they forgot to put New Zealand on one of the maps that they sold. And it was even picked up by last week tonight, and now there's even a subreddit about it, there's a Tumblr page. So everybody is trying, is rooting for New Zealand, putting them back on the map. And what better way to put New Zealand on the map than creating a Pacific-centered version? Because in that way, New Zealand really gets all the attention that it actually deserves. Now, uh, creating a Pacific-centered version of our products is something that we already did for the exclusive economic zones uh, and some of the other products that Salva mentioned that we uh, provide. But we also did it for in this case. And the new thing was that we tried to do it not only uh, with our old workflow that we had uh, in R, but also with um, PostGIS and using QGIS. So we have three different ways to get to the same result. And let me go briefly through them because it's very easy for you to just use the same approach on your own products. If uh, you see anything in the code that you think this could be improved, uh, please let us know because we are always looking to improve our data. So first thing that we did and the final solution that we actually used was in PostGIS. Uh, basically what we do is we cut the product at the uh, meridian of Greenwich and then paste it 
uh, back on the other side. So it's easy as that. And the code that uh, is required for doing this process, you can see on the left-hand side, maybe one thing that I want to point out more in detail is the function strapx. And this is actually what you use to translate um, the polygon from one side to the other side. And you don't only have the option to do this for the uh, meridian of Grants, you can define uh, any meridian that you would like to use. So as I said, we also did the same workflow in QGIS. Um, we did not do this automatically, even though we could um, also put this in a graphic modeler. It's basically the same idea. So what you're going to do is you're going to split it at the meridian of Greenwich. You're going to copy paste it to the other side, and then you're going to dissolve the two polygons back together. Uh, and we did that by using an extract by expression. So those two methods were developed, especially for the high seas. But as I already mentioned, we did this before for our other products in R. And funny thing is, uh, this code is developed by my colleague Leonard Schepers. He had kind of a uh, he has the same end result, but a different approach. What he did was he made an entire copy of the original polygon to uh, 100, and he, he just translated it 360 degrees, and then he made a bounding box to cut out the part that is between 0 and 360 degrees. Um, so you basically get the same output, but you just get there in a different way. And as we all know, it's not about the journey, it's about the destination. Eh? <clears throat> um, now, how can you access this magnificent data product? There are different ways sorted by uh, their complexity. The easiest way to have a look at the data is to um, have a look at our Marine Regions Gazetteer. Um, we're not going to talk too much about the Marine Regions Gazetteer this evening, but it's a, a glorious database and you should definitely have a, a look at it if you have some more time, especially if you're into marine science. Um, so you can go to our gazetteer. You can see there that it, uh, this feature has its unique ID identifier, and then you can find all the information about this, um, about this uh, data product. What you can also do um, is you can go to our download page and just download the file directly. Uh, we now offer GeoPackage uh, as a default option for download because we, we are open like that. Um, but you can also download in any other formats uh, such as Shapefile. Uh, uh, there's also KML there, I think. Um, so you can get the data for yourself and play around with it a little bit. And then one step further, if you're more into your OGC services, then you can, uh, we have a, um, a geo server installment here at uh, the Flanders Marine Institute, and you can just get it through WMS, or you can find the WFS link over there. And um, as an added bonus, um, we also have an R package that is making use of these OGC services. So the R package is called M Regions, and you can just get this um, high seas product right into your R um, studio. So that's also possible. And then the cherry on top of the cherry on top of the pie is you can now also get this data as link data. This is an effort that we have been doing in the first half of this year, providing all the data in the Marine Regions Gazetteer as linked open data. There's even a linked data event stream where you can track the changes that have happened to the Gazetteer over time uh, to incorporate it into your own database. And so in this way, you can get either a turtle or a JSON LD output of this of these high seas. Uh, it's totally uh, interoperable, machine to machine readable. So it's a, a nice way of also including these data into your um, product. I'd like to mention about this that uh, we are planning to include these services uh, the, of uh, open link data into the marine regions R package. It's still not there, but uh, wait a few months and you will see. Well, it's a work in progress. So please come back to us. Um, I think this brings us already to the end yep. of our presentation. Uh, we would like everyone that was on the team that worked on this, uh, and we would like to thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions, then we are happy to hear about them. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter. Yeah, follow us on Twitter. Thanks a lot for your presentation. It was uh, really interesting. And let's see if there are some questions from the audience. No, not yet, at least. And uh, so uh, I can ask you why you you did it. So and uh, 
uh, you take the boundary of the state, right? And make the buffer around them. Yeah, you normally take the 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 straight base, baseline of the country, this are information that are in legal papers of different treaties or the, the countries themselves they put them on as a website. The, it's also the United Dualos, Nations. Yeah, Dualos. Deposit, yeah. Of the United Nations. This is really a, a, a piece of paper in a PDF format. Uh, what we did uh, through a lot of effort during the years is uh, put this into a, a what, some kind of database, any kind, and um, and then we could we could create lines out of that. Uh, okay. Having uh, some those base straight baselines that are just on the coastline of a country, and when there are no baselines, we use the coast uh, coastline of the country. Uh, we make a buffer of two hundred. Uh, Nautical miles. 200 nautical miles offshore, which is uh, what the 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 UNCLOS, the United Nations um, Convention for the Law of the Sea, considers that is the exclusive economic zone of each country. Now, when they open, because of course many countries are close to each other, they overlap. What we do is we look for for treaties. Uh, sometimes there are court arbitrations as well, because there are many fights regarding this uh, this. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, we use those treaties or those uh, when there are no when there are no treaties or no court arbitrations, we simply draw a media line between the the two, the two, the two zone. and then we put the polygons there. Okay. And uh, for you, are you, these data are useful for what? Well, well um, so we are actually um, an institute that is providing services to science uh, globally. So we see that these products are picked up for research, biodiversity research, but they're also being picked up, for example, by Global Fishing Watch, so fisheries research. They're being used sometimes by the press. Uh, for example, I know that last year there was a map made with the marine regions polygons by the New York Times. Uh, by companies like uh, Marine Traffic, also TomTom is using these products. Um, so they're used in many different applications, uh, and we just provide them as open as an open global data set to be used by anyone uh, who has interest. Uh, being that we're not really recommending it to, to be used for legal use or for um, for um, navigating, so mainly for research, for education, mm. etc. Okay. So. Okay, so one question from the audience. Just so the question is: Not all marine boundaries are clear. There are some disputes about marine boundaries between different countries, and uh, so you already spoke that uh, you look on the on the document where there are some uh, disputes, and uh, you you remove them, right? Yeah. yeah. We, <laughs> we try to remain as impartial as possible. So um, we we really look into court arbitrations, for example, like Salva mentioned. Um, and if there's ever any doubt, then we will just try to draw the median line and uh, display the region as a uh, disputed area. So we are not um, taking sides uh, when we Sorry. are creating these polygons. Okay. So, so this means that for some countries might not be they consider they are not correct uh, because if they but because they they have a side on this uh, let's say fight or or confrontation. So sometimes they even contact us and say your boundaries are not right, but we answer with this like we don't take sides. So until there is not a court arbitration saying what is the the final decision, then we we offer a media line because that's what it's more correct we believe. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so thanks a lot, and uh, Thank you. see you around. And uh, for for the track is all. And uh, in uh, ten minutes there will be the last uh, speak in the Marina Liban Liban uh, track, and uh, and after that there will be the closing session. So uh, see there.